one of the first things you worry about when you have a, a spacecraft that might have some problems with its thrusters is making sure it separates from the space station and doesn't uh, go out of control or collide with it or in any way threaten the lives of the people on board the space station. It's well clear now, so they're in, uh, they're safe. And now the next question is, will it uh, come all the way back to Earth uh, also uh, perfectly normally? Yeah, there's so much riding uh, on a smooth ride home for the Starliner. The whole issue, of course, was about the thruster malfunctions and helium leaks. So for those of us in Earth, uh, on Earth, and don't speak space language, what does that actually mean? Well, the thrusters are what control the pointing of the spacecraft. So it's kind of like the steering wheel in your car. If they don't work, you can't control where the vehicle is pointed. And that obviously is, is not a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and they need that to work properly to, to get from place to place, to get up to the space station, but also to come home safely. They need to make sure that the, the capsule is pointed the right way when it does the deorbit burn, so it could successfully come back and re-enter the atmosphere. So it's a critical system. And uh, so far, it, again, today is working fine. And I just want to set expectations. I've, I'm fully confident that it's going to go just swimmingly the okay. rest of the way, that it'll come back due to deorbit burn and everything will be fine. Uh, I, I, you know, I think that that's what we will see over the next uh, five hours or mm -hmm. so, and that's when it'll land. Um, but, uh, you know, there's still some uncertainty there. And so that's why I think NASA made the right decision mm -hmm. in not putting people on board uh, when they bring it back. OK, but Garrett, I want to take you back to when it first launched, though, about June 6th, June 5th or so. Uh, there were already some problems that had already been flagged at that time. Uh, so if this, if it had already happened on the journey, was it remarkable that the astronauts made it to the ISS safely? Well, they had some serious problems with those same thrusters as they were approaching the International Space Station. Of the 28 thrusters, five of them failed to function properly. One of them failed so bad that they've turned it off and they're leaving it off. So right now they're coming home with 27 out of the 28. And all the ones that had failed, the five that failed, were pointed in kind of the same direction. So they were getting in danger of losing control of at least one of the axes of the spacecraft. That's a very serious failure. Yeah. Um, they didn't. They they didn't uh, actually um, get to that point. So they had control the whole time. They quickly got four of the five thrusters back, and then they had redundancy. So they were they were safe. But this is not. Uh, it wasn't a trivial failure. Now, what we're watching on screens at the moment are the highlights um, of what actually uh, happened to the uh, craft. This is, of course, another reputational blow for Boeing. What are the company's prospects, you know, in terms of securing certification to fly astronauts in the future? Well, yeah, it's, it's been uh, not the best year, I would say, in Boeing's history. Um, but look, they've had a lot of success as well. And the, you got to keep in mind, Boeing also operates the space station and for NASA is involved with the SLS rocket. So NASA is really counting on Boeing to be a good partner and uh, also for Starliner. One of the things that this whole situation has demonstrated very clearly is how important it is to NASA to have two different options. Mm -hmm. So if something goes wrong with one spacecraft, there's another option. And in this case, that the option to bring Sonny and Butch home on a SpaceX Dragon spacecraft. Right. So uh, if, they only, if they only have one provider, if there's only one spacecraft, they don't have that backup option. They really want Boeing to be there for yeah. the long haul. So you worked for SpaceX there for, for a while. Do you see this as a win for SpaceX? <laughs> well... I'm trying not to gloat, you know, it, it's uh, uh, very unseemly to do so. Uh, and look, we want everybody to, to succeed, especially when it comes to human spaceflight, because, you know, we're talking about people's lives. I'm a very good friend of Sunny, so, so mm -hmm. I have a personal uh, vested interest in her safety. Um, so we want every, everybody, we want everybody to win. Uh, and um, I think it is uh, critically important. We said it from the very beginning when NASA was deciding whether or not to select one or two companies to provide this capability, how important it is to have options, to have redundancy, to have more than one uh, way to do this. So I really want Boeing to find a way, the, the way forward here, solve this problem with the thrusters and get back to, to flying people again. And I think Boeing wants the same. And I really hope to see Starliner fly again in the near future with crew on board with these problems solved uh, and behind them.